So I want to talk a little bit, where's my mouse? So how do I get the Zoom controls out of my slides now? <laughs> That's really annoying. Anyways, lesson learned. So this presentation will be a little bit about the open source projects that I'm working on. Uh, they are full with little, I hope, useful controls that I developed over time. They are, like I said, all open source. You can find them all on GitHub, uh, not under the Lemmerman account, but under DLSC Software Consulting. Um, for some technical reasons, I moved everything over there. So these controls, every time I work on an application and uh, over the last three years, it was really mostly the CRM desktop application, uh, the startup I work for in, in, in London. Um, whenever I see that there's a control where I think it, pretty much anyone could use that in their apps and it's not really uh, a big advantage that we only have it in our application, you know, not a competitive advantage. Um, we will not sell more licenses of our software just because there's a time picker in there, right? I mean, it's, it's just pointless. So whenever I see a control that I think would be useful for others, I try to move it into one of my open source repositories. So currently I work on the CRM desktop for uh, our energy as a service platform. But in the past, I mostly worked on creating uh, UIs for planning and scheduling applications. Um, and I think I've posted many screenshots of that also on Twitter. So if you follow me there, you might have seen some of them. So there's this framework that I work on. It's called FlexScan FX. Um, the Flex stands for flexible because the idea is that um, it's domain independent. And whenever your application has like time sensitive scheduling data that requires a timeline at the top and you need to be able to interact with the data, then that's a use case for FlexScan FX. And um, the component can be customized in many ways. So, the screen you see here, that's an application for architects. Then this application, this is a project I did for Emirates Airlines. Uh, each horizontal bar represents a flight of one of the aircraft and they have a, like a, a two-way split screen horizontally and vertically. Then the next one is a screenshot taken from NEOS, an application at the European Broadcasting Union where they schedule radio and television uh, transmissions throughout Europe and, and the rest of the world. And this is a satellite ground uh, tracking system developed by Airbus. So you, you see Flexcan is flexible and it can be used for many different domains. So the result um, of those, um, of me collecting those individual controls, um, I always try to target the GEMS FX project, but when I see that a control becomes too big, I move it out of GEMS FX and I move it into their own project. And that recently happened. That's why I, um, in, in the beginning of uh, today's conference, I said that I'm not just talking about Gems FX, but also a few more projects because I recently moved uh, stuff into a project called Keyboard FX and one called PDF View FX. But in Gems FX, what you, uh, one of the latest editions, something you find there, and that's something that I needed uh, quite a few times already, and something that was needed for um, a project that I'm currently doing at Car with, together with Caracoon is a time picker where you can simply enter uh, the hour of the day and the minute of the hour, um, which it can do. And if you click on it, you will also uh, be presented with a pop-up where you can interactively select the hour or the minute from, from the drop-down list. So this is also touch enabled. And I was really trying to aim for a consistent look with the rest of the JavaFX controls. That's why below that control, you see this area that's titled compare where you can see the standard date picker and the standard text field. I really wanted to make sure that the time picker looks just like the other controls and fits in very nicely. Uh, it's, it has full keyboard support. So you can use arrow keys, you can go up, down, you can use the keyboard to enter the time and, and so on. Um, and then of course it makes sense to not just have a time picker but also a duration picker. So there you can enter a duration duration like two days, 10 hours, 23 minutes, 55 seconds and 001 milliseconds. I doubt that anyone needs that, uh, at least not all those five fields at the same time, but maybe an application needs seconds and milliseconds because it's in the scientific domain, okay? Uh, or you just need uh, the fields for days and hours. And those fields are all rollover. So if you hit a certain thresh, threshold for a field, 
it will automatically increment the previous field. And you can also modify the labels. The, it has support for short labels and long labels or no labels at all. The next control that also just recently added is called, a, I call it photo view, but it's really stupid name. I think I need to change that. I don't know, maybe avatar picker or something like that. But that's a UI that you know from many applications where you register your uh, uh, an account and then you want to upload um, like a profile image, like a photo of yourself. So you can just use drag and drop. Oh, that's, that's a very attractive person right there. And you can drag in a big photo and you can zoom in and place the image. You can change it to a rectangle, back to a circle. You can make this field editable or not. And uh, while you're doing all these things, at the same time, it's creating a crop version of the image. So if you want to then uh, save a smaller version of the photo to your database, uh, you can get rid of the original big image and just use the little, little one. Then one control that has been in there for quite some time is something that I really, really needed a lot for our CRM desktop application. It's a draw control, but it's not just a draw that uh, pops up and then disappears again, but you can also use a handle to resize it and a button to close it. And it has these little details that are important, like when you drag the draw outside the visible area, like this now, bang, it just auto closes, right? It's these little details that are super important for the overall user experience and that they're happy with the control. Yeah. And also it provides a glass pane in the background. So whatever you have in the background will be blocked from user input. Also pretty new is the filter view, uh, which again, we needed for the CRM desktop application. And you can um, define these fields at the top that will be presented at dropdowns. And um, then the dropdown has a couple of entries. So basically it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a menu. And then whenever you select something, it will show up as a blue chip view that you can then remove again from the filter criteria. So you can select these filter objects, but you can also enter a filter text in the upper right corner. So that's in GemsFX. And this one also, again, very new. Actually, I just noticed that all the older components I've recently moved into their own projects. And what you find now in GemsFX, most of it is, is uh, very new. So this is a payment option view that supports, I think, around 50 different option types, like Bitcoin, PayPal, MasterCard, uh, general credit cards, uh, all kinds of online payment options that exist that I never even heard of but there was somebody who created all these nice graphics uh, and we also added a few to it. And then I turned that into a JavaFX control and it supports a dark and a light theme. All right, so uh, one of those uh, separate projects that I mentioned is PickerFX. That's something I think I did last year or maybe already one and a half years ago. Uh, there was a customer project, a company called Navi Electro in Finland. They requested this feature and basically they wanted something that we all, we, that we have all seen before on um, iOS and uh, yeah, on iOS devices where you can use touch to enter a value. And sometimes in this video, you can see that it stutters a little bit that it always depends on which input device I use. If I use the mouse, the, the scroll wheel, it's a, then the events are a little bit more discreet. But if I use a touchpad, then it's super smooth. So that's in the project called Picker FX. And then Keyboard FX, I moved out of Gems FX just last week. This will give you an on-screen keyboard um, that you can embed in, into, into, for example, in this case, a stack pane. And when you enter and when you click, when you activate a text input field, the keyboard will automatically show up from, it will fly in from the bottom, just like you know from other devices. And yes, I totally stole the design from Apple and iOS because I'm not a designer, I'm a programmer. And the guys at Apple, they really uh, know what they're doing. At least, well, their designers definitely know what they're doing. And the keyboard supports multiple uh, languages or keyboard layouts. So you can pick one uh, in the lower left corner when you click on the uh, key with the, with the earth symbol on it. And there's also a dark theme. And then the last control and the last project is called PDF View FX. That was also in Gems FX until recently. This will give you a nice PDF view um, with a lot of uh, convenience features already built in. This is, of course, uh, based on, or not of course, but it is based on a PDF library called PDF Box uh, from Apache. 
Um, I really do not have the time to <laughs> implement all of that myself. This is a huge project. And the Java FX control is just a thin layer on top of PDF uh, box. And I think there's a, yeah, there's a second screen here. I recently also added search. So you can just type something in the text field at the top. It will highlight uh, the, 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 wherever it finds it in the document and also present you with a nice list of all the hits on the left-hand side. Yeah, and I think that's it. There's another thing I could talk about, but we are really running out of time. So if I stop now, at least we will have five minutes, a five minute break and everybody can grab a coffee. Thank you. Great, we have some, some questions. Okay. Are you? Uh, wait, oh, uh, let me see. So um, one question is uh, about the keynote. Does it support all locals? Or what locals does it support? Keyboard. The keyboard, uh, all, the, all the layouts, the keyboard layouts are all in XML files. So you can add any layout that you like, but it comes with the, the German layout, a German, German Germany. Uh, it comes with uh, the US layout and with the Finnish layout because the sponsor was a Finnish company. Okay. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but most of the controls had a third party logo in the upper left, in the lower left corner. So most of the controls were sponsored one way or another by a company. Okay, so sponsoring open source works. Okay, that's cool. Um, so there was a question, if you know if there's a, a control for printing files. For printing files? The yeah. PDF? Yeah, the question was if there's a control for printing files, maybe in the PDF viewer, if you have support. Yeah, I mean, that's already built into a PDF box, so I didn't have to do anything there. You can just send that to the printer. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, did, I, I like the last one. Why did I create keyboard FX instead of using the FX virtual keyboard? Oh, yeah, this is new. I haven't seen that. Yeah, okay. Because I think that's a little bit a dormant project. Uh, that's one of the reasons. You know, it's in the mobile area. Uh, I did not hear a lot of good things about it, but I know that my customer tried using it and they were not happy with it. Uh, they wanted re a really nicely designed uh, keyboard that really looks like what you can find on, on an iPad. So um, I think basically the answer is that it just wasn't good enough for them. Okay. Cool. And I think it also, it, 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 I think it only appears on strictly mobile devices, but then if you have like a PC that has a touch display, it doesn't work as well. Cup, couple of issues there. I can't remember it's too long ago. Do you, do you know a good tutorial where to start when creating custom control? So I had some, oh, the chat already provided some links that are related to Java. Oh, we garage, right? yes, we... Actually, I don't have one for, for uh, Java FX 11. Um, no, I do not know that because I didn't, I, I didn't start with Java 11. I started that's with the point, right? Yeah. yeah. Started with A, so that's a that's a good point. Yeah, so that, that that might be a gap. Yeah, but I mean, if you want to know a little bit about how to write custom controls, then you can go to my website at dlsc.com, and there is a blog with uh, roughly thirty posts where I talk about custom control development. It's not it's not addressing like how do you do custom controls, but it's uh, giving you individual uh, tips and tricks on how to do certain things. I, I wrote a blog post for Java 8 exactly about how to write custom controls. I would look that up. And, and Garrett just made a good comment that it's actually not that much different between 8 and 11. Okay, yeah. that's, that's good. So I can, I will just uh, look for, for my post and, and post it there. Yeah, the rest was so they liked your, your controls. There was a lot of good feedback. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. A lot of people ask why you used that picture and not a really, really nice one for the avatar. No, because, because we have a code of conduct. I had somebody else in there first, but, but then you objected and my wife objected and then I had to remove her again. Sorry. 